All right, so I can finally make this video now that I graduated my entire computer science degree in one video. So fall of 2020, um, I started my university life at SUNY Korea, which is Stony Brook University, which is like a school in uh, Long Island in New York, but uh, the Korea campus. And there I majored in computer science. I was in a program where I spent the first three years in Korea, and then my final year would be in the New York campus. Uh, now, I have mixed feelings about that, but I'm not going to voice my opinion about that in this video. I knew I wanted to major in computer science since my senior year of high school when I took my first um, programming class. Uh, to be honest, I struggled throughout that class and I kind of hated it, but um, I decided to major in computer science later on because it gave me a challenge and it was also a pretty popular major. I also started university right when COVID peaked and so I did have a pretty weird and un unconventional university life with like half of everything being online. So hopefully the people who started university around the same time you guys can relate. Anyways, let's get straight into it. First year filled with hopes and dreams. I took my first computer science class in the fall of 2020. I was able to skip my introductory programming class, uh, which was like in Python, because I did have some uh, experience programming. I studied programming in Python a little bit by myself, like before college started. And so I jumped straight into object-oriented programming, which was in Java. So this class, I basically learned all the basic principles of OOP, like polymorphism, encapsulation, inheritance, and abstraction. But because I had some programming experience with Python, it wasn't too hard to pick up Java. Also, let me just preface uh, everything by saying that uh, my first two years of university was like pre was pre ChatGPT era, and so I didn't have ChatGPT to do all my assignments for me. So, so the main resource that I used was Stack Overflow and some other like threads on Reddit. So I remember the assignments taking me kind of long. But besides that, I, I did like fairly well in that class. And also for my first semester, I also took Calc 1, which was not too bad because I'm pretty sure high schoolers take Calc 1 these days. So second semester of my freshman year, I took the class that is notorious for weeding out computer science students, data structures and algorithms. Yeah, and this class was definitely uh, tough for me. So I had to kind of collaborate a lot with my classmates. I was kind of forced to make friends in that class so that I can um, copy their assignments. I learned the foundational knowledge in order to pass like technical interviews. So this is when I also first started lead coding. That's right, my downfall started pretty early. Probably, I think I tried like one lead code problem and it took me like probably like two or three hours and so I kind of gave up. But anyways, yeah, I also took uh, foundations of computer science. I don't know why it's called that because it's actually just discrete math. It's basically just a logic class where you learn about like conjunctions, disjunctions and stuff like that. And I also took Calc 2 this semester, which was really hard. But what made it harder was that I had literally, I literally had the worst professor in existence. I'm not just saying this because I got a bad grade, but you can ask anyone from my school about this professor. They would all agree that this was the worst professor they've ever encountered. But moving on, sophomore year, uh, I became an RA because I mean, you can only apply to become an RA uh, from your sophomore year. And I also applied because I found out that they don't have to pay for their dorms. So that was honestly uh, the main reason I applied, but it was good. I was able to meet a lot of people through being an RA and I was an RA for like two straight years. I had to do like weekly check-ins with residents, organize events, and also facilitate a community in the dorms, which <sighs> did not happen. Oh, I also became a TA uh, this semester for my object-oriented class, which honestly I really enjoyed because I kind of liked helping other people. Teaching someone about a topic that you're really familiar with and seeing them like progressively understand it uh, actually gave me a lot of, it gave me a really big sense of fulfillment. Uh, but in terms of classes, uh, I took system fundamentals and programming abstractions. So in programming abstractions, I learned in depth the, the difference between Java, C, and Scheme, which is a dialect of Lisp, which is like a functional programming language. This was somewhat low level programming because I learned a lot about like heaps, stacks, um, memory allocation and garbage collectors and stuff like that. But system fundamentals, now that was actual low level programming. So this was basically a computer architecture class. And we learned about, you know, like gates, multiprocessors, and of course, MIPS assembly. To be honest, I personally don't like hardware stuff, but surprisingly, I enjoyed assembly. And this semester, I also took linear algebra, which um, was really important as a CS major. But again, it was the same uh, crappy professor. And so that kind of ruined my whole experience. 
but yeah, I didn't do too bad this semester. Yeah, so my second semester of my sophomore year, that's when I took my first software engineering course, which was my favorite class that I've ever taken. The professor was really good and it also taught me a lot of practical skills for software engineering. So we learned full stack development using the MERN stack. We had a final project where you had to work with another partner to develop like a complete full stack web application. And my partner was uh, pretty smart and so we were able to work pretty well together and we kind of nailed our final presentation and i also took uh, intro to the theory of computation which was my least favorite class because we learned some bs like finite automata regular expressions and turing machines i guess it kind of helps you think like a computer scientist but the content was really not interesting to me at all and for my math class i took statistics which was, it was okay all right so i wanted to take this time to talk about ultra human I've worked with Ultra Human for quite a while now and I've done a lot of videos with them. But I'm partnering with them again in this video because it's been two years since they've released the Ultra Human Ring Air, which is their flagship product. Ultra Human creates wearable technology that helps you understand how your body responds to food, exercise, and sleep in real time. The Ultra Human Ring Air is a smart ring that tracks your movement, heart rate, sleep, and workouts, and kind of like a thousand other things. I've been using the Ring Air for almost like a year now. I have it on right now as well. And honestly, I've learned so much about myself, about my sleep patterns, my stress rhythms. I've also been able to set like movement goals and sleep goals so I can, you know, get more exercise or have better quality sleep. And it's good because I can track my progress through like graphs and, you know, really cool visuals. The Ultra Human Ring will be 15% off, which is huge. Purchase it using the link in the description below or if you use code HAN10 at checkout. So if you want to look more, you know, fashionable and also want to keep track of your health and live a healthier lifestyle, use a link in the description to buy yourself an Ultra Human Ring Air and be awesome like me. I'm just kidding, I'm not that awesome. Back to the video. And on to my junior year, I took a computer networks class, which was honestly super hard, but I found the topic to be really fascinating. I think computer networks in general is, is kind of important to know in order to become a software engineer. Here I learned how the internet actually works and how computers actually communicate with the, each other and with servers. I remember, I'm pretty sure I did like three consecutive all-nighters to finish the final project for this class. And yeah, it was definitely not a good experience. I remember when I was presenting my final project to my professor, he literally looked at me in the face and he was like, okay, you, he was like, you look really tired and you should go get some rest. And so he gave me a pretty decent score. So I mean, I'll take it, you know? And the other class I took was technical communications, which was basically like a writing class. It basically taught you how to write and speak professionally, like in a professional context. This semester I took uh, graph theory which was probably the hardest math class that I've ever taken. It definitely humbled me. And I also decided to uh, become a TA again for the same class because my professor knew me and he was like, yeah, why not you just, why not just do it again, you know? And so doing it for the second time honestly was even more fun because I was more familiar with the topic and I knew the professor as well. And it was really chill and easy and it was free three credits. My second semester of my junior year, I took two of the most notoriously difficult CS courses, System Fundamentals 2 and Machine Learning. System Fundamentals 1 was hard enough, but the sequel season was there to really ruin my life. But thankfully, my friend who took it like a semester before me, he had a lot of like study materials. I was able to kind of use those resources to get through that class, but Machine learning, on the other hand, uh, did not let me go so easily. I literally got an 18% on my first exam. I probably didn't score higher than a 50% in any of my exams for that class. But I mean, turns out that most people didn't really do well. And so I was like around the average. And I also took engineering ethics, which I personally thought was really fun. I did a case study on the Boeing 737 MAX, which was a, like a model of a plane that crashed twice within a span of like two or three years uh, because of a software issue called MCAS. Yeah, I just really enjoyed the discussions in that class and the presentations were pretty fun as well. But yeah, that marked the end of my time in Korea. And so for my senior year, I went to New York first semester. I took an algorithms course, a database course, and my final software engineering capstone. Course. The algorithms course was really difficult uh, because we learned pretty advanced algorithms. There was no coding and everything was handwritten uh, like in pseudocode. We learned a lot of dynamic programming problems like knapsack problem, edit distance, some graph traversal algorithms, and matrix problems. To be honest, I did pretty bad in this course, but I would say I did learn a lot. 
and I applied a lot of the materials I learned in this class to my technical interviews. The software engineering course that I took was the course that had the you know, final capstone project that I had to work on in order to graduate. Thankfully, I had my classmates that I already knew from before. Um, and so four of us worked together on the project and it was a semester long project. So it was like a, it was like a four month thing. There was a ton of work, but I found it pretty fun because it felt like I was actually working because we had like project management tools. We wrote a lot of like documentation. We did code reviews and we also had to do like a project review every week with our, you know, quote unquote project manager, which was basically our TA. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was really hard, but I got through it somehow. And my database course, it, it wasn't actually like a in-depth database course. It was just more like, it was just a conceptual class about databases. And finally, my final semester of university, I just took three CS elective courses and just one other like uh, gen ed. I took logic, AI, and data science. This semester, I was not focused on school at all because I was probably spending around 80% of my time job hunting and interview prepping and everything that that entails. And basically when I would finish like job related stuff at the end of the day i'll I'll just try to cram as much schoolwork as possible at one point though like i low-key thought i was gonna fail one of my class and so there there are a few moments where i was like okay i probably have to lock in because i i have to graduate and get my degree if i want to work my logic class was pretty easy considering that it was a cs course for every single exam and quiz i just i just did an all-nighter the night before and somehow got through my data science course was also pretty chill just uh, pretty simple like Python stuff. But my AI class was not that easy because it was a lot of memorization of like kind of advanced concepts and the concepts, yeah, the concepts themselves are pretty hard and I it was kind of hard to understand, which is why I got a pretty low score. I mean, initially I thought I was gonna fail my courses, but I ended up getting actu actually like a pretty high GPA for the semester. And so I really don't know how that worked out, but you know what, I'll take it. Uh, my goal for my freshman year was to get above a 3.5 for like my cumulative GPA and I was able to accomplish that and so I would say academically speaking I'm I'm satisfied with my university life but yeah that marks the end of my computer science degree honestly it's really cool to see how far I've come because in the beginning I was just a really anxious nervous uh, but motivated little kid now I would say I have a little bit more knowledge and experience, but yeah, I'm just still anxious and nervous kid. But yeah, for those starting CS or those who are you know in the early stages, if I were to give you one piece of advice, I would say don't stress too much about schoolwork and about your future and everything. I know by me saying that, like honestly, I feel like it wouldn't doesn't really help. But looking like from my perspective, I was literally in your guys' shoes. But from my perspective, right now I can say all that worrying was kind of unnecessary. That doesn't mean don't care about your classes and you don't have to put effort into your classes. You'll probably have a lot of all-nighters, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of coding for 12 hours a day, but you don't have to be worried, you know, just play it chill. If you're motivated enough and if you care about what you're doing enough, it'll all work out. You know, just try to get, just be proactive, network a lot, make a lot of friends, try to get as much exposure to career stuff as much as possible early on. But most importantly, touch grass, take a shower. I'll see you guys next time.